children uh, welcome to our third Sunday of Lent and uh, remember uh, today we are halfway through Lent uh, so we need to keep going and try our best to grow closer to God um, so let us pray now Lord God when we are feeling that it's hard to do the right thing help us to trust in your love amen today in the gospel we will hear the story of uh, Jesus who is in the temple of God and the temple is a God's house where people come to give praise to God but today we will hear what happened when Jesus went to the temple and he found people using the temple like a market selling birds and animals to be sacrificed and arguing over money listen to what happened A reading from the good news given to us by St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Just before the feast of the Passover, Jesus went to the temple in Jerusalem. There in the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and money changers sitting at their tables. Jesus made a whip from some rope and chased them all out of the temple, the cattle and the sheep as well. He knocked over the tables and scattered the money and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop making my father's house into a market. The Jews in charge said, what right have you to do this? Give us some proof. Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it again. They did not understand that Jesus was talking about himself, that he would be put to death and would rise again in three days. The Gospel of the Lord. So we heard in the story, the gospel story this morning, that Jesus got angry with the people who were spoiling the temple, spoiling God's house of prayer. They were spoiling it by using it to buy and sell animals and to cheat people. He was upset about something else as well. Jesus saw into the hearts of all the merchants and the money changers, that they were there for the love of money and not there for the love of God. By chasing them away, Jesus cleansed the temple and made it a holy and sacred place again. So now we're going to ask three of the children what this gospel means to us today. So first I invite you, Emmanuel.
Sometimes we become distracted by worldly, worldly things that lead us away from God, like TV, playing computer games. I'm sure you all know what that means. Too much time, TV, computer games, wanting to do things that fill us with um, enthusiasm, maybe not doing the things that God wants us to do. Um, now we hear what Aidan thinks the story's telling us today. Sometimes we are selfish and greedy and do things for ourselves rather than for God. Maybe we disobey our parents or are not helpful. Thank you, Aidan. Yes, do we listen to what God wants us to do or do we like to do our own thing? Now I invite Antoine to come up. Lent is a time when we can take a look at our daily lives and see whether our hearts need to be cleansed and whether what is important to us is important to God too. What's important to God, that's what we have to remember because God can see into our hearts and he knows when we're doing good things or when we're just wasting our time and not having God right in our hearts. So now we have a little experiment today or a little visual aid to help you see how we can put God into our lives. So Luke and Joseph are going to help me with this. One on each side, yeah? Okay, so I'll show first, wait a minute, Joseph, wait a minute. This jar here, uh, glass jar, represents our life. And I have some stones and pebbles, some big, some medium, and some quite small. So this big one here, Luke, hold it right up. Who does that represent? This one represents God. Well done. We have family going to church, praying, medium-sized things. And here, Luke um, and Joseph have all the things we like to do, all the things that fill our time, um, riding our bikes, video games, um, schoolwork, chores, um, more video games, Minecraft, they tell me, all these things that take so much of our time. And for parents, we all know what takes our time each day. So we're going to fill the jar slowly. First, Luke. Now, Joseph, fill the jar with all these things, even eating and cleaning. <laughs> yes. And then we can fill with, and playing, that's right, playing. Family, because we love our family. We love our friends. We love coming to church, that can be important. We love praying. And we love... Um, doing, being kind and helpful. But then, when we try to put God in with all of that, what happens? It won't fit. There's no room. There's no room for this, this God in our lives. So we have to start again and rethink how we can put God into the center. So we bring all the stones out again, like this. And now we put God into the center. Joseph, Phil, stop pouring and then I'll move my hand. Stop pouring. Okay, 
all the things we love to do to fill our time. And now you too. That's it, poor, poor, poor. We can still fit those things in. We can still care for our family. We can still come to church. We can still think about our friends. We can still pray. And they all fit in. We can still be kind. Yeah. Luke said they just fit in, but they do. You can see that God didn't fit in before, and now God is there in the middle. And that's how our hearts want to be. We want to have God right in the middle of our hearts so that we become temples of God and others can see our light shining because we have God in the centre. So now the children are going to pray their bidding prayers. So thank you, Luke and Joseph. Lord, you have given us hearts that want fairness and justice, and so we pray. We pray for the world that leaders everywhere may act with fairness and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church that we may serve you not just in our church buildings, but every moment we are some with somebody, Lord in your mercy. We pray for the people who are treated unfairly in any way. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for any of our friends or family who are having a sad time at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, help us to work with you, to follow Jesus' example, to make the world a fairer place. We make all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you, children, for your answers, for praying the prayers. And we will remember this week, the third week of Lent, that we have to keep going and we have to keep Jesus and God right in the center of our hearts. So we'll see you all next week. Have a really good week. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that